There are certain jobs in this life that I just would not do. And after reading about the incident I'm going to talk about today, this would go right on top of the list of nopes. This incident has been labeled the worst diving accident in history and one of the most gruesome accidents ever to happen. Hello and welcome back or welcome to my channel if you don't know what's going on here. I am a horror artist and I like to draw what I talk about in these videos. Now there's nothing in this video that is meant to be insensitive to the victims or the victims families but if you are a sensitive person especially with this video I recommend not watching this. There is going to be a uh, one or two gruesome pictures in this uh, video so yeah if you're sensitive in any way shape or form yeah just click off i don't want you to have a coronary because you've watched something that has offended you and i'm definitely not the channel for you if you are easily offended or you are a sensitive person but with that being said let's get on with the video so we've all heard about the Ocean Gate Titan implosion, and while that is a complete tragedy, I still have to shake my head at billionaires, especially ones that decide to run a submersible with a $70 Logitech controller, but mm, we won't go into that, will we? And you think that that incident was bad? Well, at least those guys died quickly and had possibly no idea what had happened to them. Unlike the five saturation divers that met a far more gruesome and horrible death in the Byford Dolphin incident. Now the Byford Dolphin was a semi-submersed drilling rig run by Dolphin Drilling. The rig was 108 meters tall and went 36 meters underneath the water with a max drilling depth of 6,100 meters and could operate in water depths of 460 meters. The rig was able to float to its locations operating in British, Danish and Norwegian waters and it was able to be moved via tugboats. The rig also had a crew of roughly around 100 people. The Byford Dolphin accident happened on the 5th of November 1983 when some saturation divers or deep sea divers were working on the rig. Now if you don't know what a saturation diver is, it's a diver that can dive down to depths of 152 meters to work on or repair equipment in the water or lay cabling or check on cabling on the ocean floor for example. So these guys can handle going down to these depths and are trained on how to come back up from those depths without getting the bends. Now if you don't know what the bends are, it's where you have a decompression change and you get decompression sickness because you get too much nitrogen in your bloodstream and it basically just really fucks you up. These divers need to breathe pressurized air that dissolves nitrogen in the diver's blood so they can do this each day or long periods of time and even up to a month they can be working and have to go down and check on the uh, you know the structure at any given time. Now these divers were living in a pressurized and very claustrophobic facility. This was a unit that was sealed off to the rest of the living quarters of the rig. This is where four divers and two dive tenders or assistants spent their time. Now the diving bell that was attached to the unit would take the divers to and from the pressurized unit to their dive location. So it would detach and then go down to uh, take the divers down to where they needed to be under the water. These kinds of divers, the saturation divers, live in a pressurized unit because they need to go down and back up in deep water frequently. So to be able to do this, they need to live in quarters that is pressurized to the same atmosphere as the pressure they are diving at. So their bodies are adjusted and they don't need to slowly come back up to the surface, which can take hours to even days, depending on the depth in which they have dived to. The divers can spend days to weeks under that constant pressure. This is such a risky job, and the divers need to be swapped out periodically to ensure that people remain safe. At 4 a.m. on the 5th of November 1983, two divers, Bjorn Bergeson and Trolls Halavec, had just come back from a dive. The other two divers, Edwin Coward and Roy Lucas, were already in the pressurized chamber. 
The two tenders or assistants that were helping with the dive were in the diving bell. As Bergeson and Hellevec were moving from the diving bell to the pressurized unit, the diving bell was accidentally depressurized by William Crammond before Hellevec could fully close the unit door and the dive bell door. The atmosphere in the unit was nine atmospheres, which was the pressure that they were diving at. So the diving bell was one atmosphere, which is what normal atmosphere is here on earth. So the unit went from nine atmospheres to one in an instant, and all people in the unit had nitrogen expand in their bodies, and it had nowhere to go, and also caused an explosion like a bomb. Three divers died from their blood boiling with air bubbles like you would see in a boiling pot on a stove. And the fourth diver, Helovic, was sucked out with the pressure. Now this is where it gets gruesome. Helovic's body was forced through a 60 centimetre hole from the pressure which caused his body to pull apart and fragment. Apparently his organs, chest and abdomen were thrown around the unit and other body parts were also found 10 metres away in the unit. Crammond was killed in the dive bell and the only survivor, Martin Saunders, the second tender, was also in the dive bell and somehow survived but suffered critical injuries. One investigator said that finding Halevik's body was like seeing something that had been dissected and thrown all around the place. Some body parts were even found on the rig deck and in the water, which was meters away from the unit. An autopsy was done on the three bodies that were intact and they found that there was fatty protein clogging their arteries from the instant boil. So it was determined that all men appeared to have died instantly and painlessly. Now, I, I'm no doctor, but I don't know. I am thinking that you would feel that. I don't know how quick that would be. Like, you know, it's not like the Titan where they would have just, you know, one minute they were alive and the next they're just completely gone and probably didn't realize what was happening. But I don't know. Please let me know if you know anything about this because I find it very hard to believe that they died instantly. After the incident, safety measures were reviewed and replaced. The company was criticized for not having an interlock system, pressure gauges and other safety features that stopped the dive bell from detaching while pressurized. So that was the other thing too, is that when this pressure uh, issue happened, when um, when one of the divers or Hellevec opened that door and the other guy hadn't shut the chamber off to the dive bell was it just exploded and pushed that dive bell and just blew it away from the unit and this is how the two tenders that were in there this is why one survived and one died and and because it was just shot out like a like an explosion like just went pew, catapulted also, they think that fatigue may have played a role in this as well. So when you're tired and you're also under that sort of pressure all the time, your brain's probably not firing on all cylinders. So that's another thing to consider. The families of the divers believed that it was all a cover-up as they did not receive compensation and they sued the Norwegian government, which was settled in 2008, 25 years after the incident. Apparently, the rig was decommissioned in 2016 due to renewable energy plans and the owner struggling with finances, but saturation divers are still required for the oil rig industry and is still listed as one of the top most dangerous but well-paid jobs with divers making anywhere from $30,000 to $50,000 a month and procedures and safety measures have significantly improved since the incident in 19. 1983. Now, you can see the disturbing photos in uh, the records of the dive and Helovec's uh, body, which is quite confronting, 
but if you are game, I do have a link below. Uh, even his face is on the report, and it has just like, it's like it's been stripped from his skull. It looks like a mask that you would see in a Hollywood movie. It's disturbing, but like, like I said, if you want to go and have a look, go and have a look at it. I will have the link below to the autopsy report and everything for uh, the divers and for Helovic's body. And you will just see that there's nothing left of him. It's just in pieces. Now, this isn't the only incident that has happened on the Byford Dolphin Rig. In 1976, the rig was in transit from the North Sea to Bergen when it ran aground. All crew were evacuated, but six people died when they fell out of their boats trying to get off the rig. On the 17th of April 2002, a 44-year-old Norwegian worker on the rig was struck in the head and died. This made Byford Dolphin lose their exploration contract with Statoil as they questioned their safety procedures again. Now the company suffered millions of dollars in lost income. Now let me know what you think about this incident. Have you heard about it? Is there uh, anything else that you want to add to the details in this story? Now this is just, this, this is really disturbing. I would hate to be someone who would have to work down in those conditions and have to live in decompression units. Like that is just something that I just think about and just go, nah, nah. That is definitely not a job for me. And I, you know, I take my head off to the, the, you know, the people who have the guts to do those sort of jobs because I certainly would never do anything like that in my life. But anyway, the illustration that I decided to do for this video today is uh, it's pretty grim. Um, and this illustration really went through a really bad, ugly stage. And I honestly didn't think I was going to pull it off. I was nearly going to abort and start again. But I stuck it out and I'm sort of glad I did because once I sort of finished it, it all came together and I was very happy um, with it. So it's it's just a monster that is all fleshy. It's it's taken from the most gruesome part of this story uh, with the body that sort of just exploded and, and just went everywhere. So I did this monster that is exploding and he's blowing, he, he's blowing out. He's got... Uh, parts of his legs blowing out, there's blood coming everywhere, there's the top of his head's blown out, In he, this, this monster had multiple eyes, so you'll see the eyeballs sort of coming up, the arms are all contorted and twisted, um, yeah, is half sort of cyborg as well, I just wanted to portray like a mechanical feel as well, just sort of um, portraying part of the uh, the decompression unit that these people were living in like a mechanical sort of vibe as well as a fleshy vibe and um, like a muscle sinewy kind of vibe from the story absolutely gruesome I know quite terrible I know but this is the first thing that came into my mind and also to represent the the boiling of the blood and and all that sort of stuff i did these orange and yellow bubbles in the stomach someone on the leg and on the arms as well just to represent that horrible horrible way that these divers died so this is just a massive representation of the torture um and this the horrific way that these divers went and you know i don't even want to think about what these poor guys went through. Um, yeah, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that's all I've got to say. But anyway, that is it from me. Uh, if you want to stick around and watch how this illustration turned out with the rest of the video, whatever there is left um, of this video, just watch it and see how the illustration turned out. And if you like this kind of content, like and subscribe, uh, dislike it, couldn't care less. It all goes towards uh, my algorithm to you know, push me up um, and let people see who I am. And if they like this kind of content, they can find me and watch me. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.